Kashrut is the set of Jewish religious dietary laws. Food that may be consumed according to Halakha is termed kosher, koar, in English, from the Ashkenazi pronunciation of the Hebrew term kashir kutar, meaning fit. Among the numerous laws that form part of kashrut are the prohibitions on the consumption of unclean animals and most insects, with the exception of certain species of kosher locusts, mixtures of meat and milk, and the commandment to slaughter mammals and birds according to a process known as shechita. There are also laws regarding agricultural produce that might impact on the suitability of food for consumption. Most of the basic laws of Kashrut are derived from the Torah's books of Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Their details and practical application, however, are set down in the oral law and elaborated on in the later rabbinical literature. While the Torah does not state the rationale for most Kashrut laws, many reasons have been suggested, including philosophical, practical and hygienic. Over the past century, there have developed numerous rabbinical organizations that certify products, manufacturers, and restaurants as kosher, usually using a symbol to indicate their support. Currently, about a sixth of American Jews or 0.3% of the American population fully keep kosher, and many more abstain from some non-kosher foods especially pork, explanations, philosophical explanations. Jewish philosophy divides the 613 mitzvot into three groups, laws that have a rational explanation and would probably be enacted by most orderly societies, laws that are understood after being explained but would not be legislated without the Torah's command, and laws that do not have a rational explanation. Some Jewish scholars say that kashrut should be categorized as laws for which there is no particular explanation, since the human mind is not always capable of understanding divine intentions. In this line of thinking, the dietary laws were given as a demonstration of God's authority, and man must obey without asking why. However, Maimonides believed that Jews were permitted to seek out reasons for the laws of the Torah. Some theologians have said that the laws of kashrut are symbolic in character. Kosher animals represent virtues, while non-kosher animals represent vices. The 1st century BCE letter of Aristeus argues that the laws have been given to awake pious thoughts and to form the character. This view reappears in the work of the 19th century Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch. The Torah prohibits seething the kid in its mother's milk. While the Bible does not provide a reason, it has been suggested that the practice was perceived as cruel and insensitive. Hasidism believes that everyday life is imbued with channels connecting with divinity, the activation of which it sees as helping the divine presence to be drawn into the physical world. Hasidism argues that the food laws are related to the way such channels termed sparks of holiness, interact with various animals. These sparks of holiness are released whenever a Jew manipulates any object for a holy reason. However, not all animal products are capable of releasing their sparks of holiness. The Hasidic argument is that animals are imbued with signs that reveal the release of these sparks and the signs are expressed in the biblical categorization of ritually clean and ritually unclean. According to Christian theologian Gordon J. Wenham, the purpose of Kashrut was to help Jews maintain a distinct and separate existence from other peoples. He says that the effect of the laws was to prevent socialization and intermarriage with non-Jews preventing Jewish identity from being diluted. Wenham argued that since the impact of the food laws was a public affair, this would have enhanced Jewish attachment to them as a reminder of their distinct status as Jews. Health explanations There have been attempts to provide empirical support for the view that Jewish food laws have an overarching health benefit for purpose, one of the earliest being from Maimonides in his Guide for the Perplexed. In 1953, David Macht, an Orthodox Jew and proponent of the theory of biblical scientific foresight, conducted toxicity experiments on many kinds of animals and fish. 
His experiment involved lupin seedlings being supplied with extracts from the meat of various animals. Macht reported that in 100% of cases, extracts from ritually unclean meat inhibited the seedlings' growth more than that from ritually clean meats. At the same time, these explanations are controversial. Scholar Lester L. Grab, writing in the Oxford Bible Commentary on Leviticus, states that a, an explanation now almost universally rejected is that the laws in this section, Leviticus chapters 11 to 15, have hygiene as their basis. Although some of the laws of ritual purity roughly correspond to modern ideas of physical cleanliness, many of them have little to do with hygiene. For example, there is no evidence that the unclean animals are intrinsically bad to eat or to be avoided in a Mediterranean climate. As is sometimes asserted, prohibited foods. The laws of kashrut can be classified according to the origin of the prohibition and whether the prohibition concerns the food itself or a mixture of foods. Biblically prohibited foods include non-kosher animals and birds. Mammals require certain identifying characteristics, while birds require a tradition that they can be consumed. Fish require scales and fins. All invertebrates are non-kosher apart from certain types of locust, on which most communities lack a clear tradition. No reptiles or amphibians are kosher. Carrion, meat from a kosher animal that has not been slaughtered according to the laws of Shechita. Injured, an animal with a significant defect or injury, such as a fractured bone or particular types of lung adhesions. Blood, blood of kosher mammals and fowl is removed through salting, with special procedures for the liver, which is very rich in blood. Particular fats. Particular parts of the abdominal fat of cattle, goats and sheep must be removed by a process called nikur, the twister nerve, the sciatic nerve, as according to Genesis chapter 32 verse 32 the patriarch Jacobs was damaged when he fought with an angel, cannot be eaten and is removed by nikur, limb of a living animal. In Genesis chapter 9 verse 4, God forbade Noah and his descendants to consume a limb torn from a live animal. Hence, Jewish law considers this prohibition applicable even to non-Jews, and therefore, a Jew may not give or sell such meat to a non-Jew. Untied food, produce of the land of Israel requires the removal of certain tithes, which in ancient times were given to the Kohanim, Levites and the poor or taken to the old city of Jerusalem to be eaten there. Fruit during the first three years. According to Leviticus chapter 19 verse 23, fruit from a tree in the first three years after planting cannot be consumed. This applies also to the fruit of the vine, grapes, and wine produced from them. New grain. In Leviticus chapter 23 verse 14 the Bible prohibits newly grown grain until the second day of Passover. There is debate as to whether this law applies to grain grown outside the land of Israel. Wine of libation. Wine that may have been dedicated to idolatrous practices. Biblically prohibited mixtures include mixtures of meat and milk. This law derives from the broad interpretation of the commandment not to cook a kid in its mother's milk. Other non-kosher food may be used for other benefit, but mixtures of meat and milk are prohibited even with regards to other benefit. Plants grown together. In the land of Israel plants are to be grown separately and not in close proximity according to Leviticus chapter 19 verse 19 and Deuteronomy chapter 22 verses 9 to 11. A specific subdivision of this law is Kileha Karim, the prohibition of planting any grain or vegetable near a grapevine. This law applies to Jews throughout the world, and one may not derive benefit from the produce. Rabbinically prohibited foods include non-Jewish milk, milk that may have an admixture of milk from non-kosher animals, non-Jewish cheese, cheese that may have been produced with non-kosher rennet, non-Jewish wine, wine that while not produced for idolatrous purposes may otherwise have been poured for such a purpose or alternatively when consumed will lead to intermarriage, food cooked by a non-Jew.
This law was enacted for concerns of intermarriage. Non-Jewish bread. This law was enacted for concerns of intermarriage. Health risk. Certain foods and mixtures are considered a health risk, such as mixtures of fish and meat. Permitted and forbidden animals only meat from particular species is permissible. Mammals that both chew their cud and have cloven hooves can be kosher. Animals with one characteristic but not the other are specifically excluded. In 2008, a rabbinical ruling determined that giraffes and the milk are eligible to be considered kosher. The giraffe has both split hooves and chews its cud. Characteristics of animals considered kosher. Findings from 2008 show that giraffe milk curdles, meeting kosher standards. Although kosher, the giraffe is not slaughtered today because the process would be very costly. Giraffes are difficult to restrain, and their use for food could cause the species to become endangered. Non-kosher birds are listed outright but the exact zoological references are disputed and some references refer to families of birds. The Mishnah refers to four signs provided by the sages. First, a doors is not kosher. Additionally, kosher birds possess three physical characteristics. An extra toe in the back, a zephic, and a corkoban with a peelable lumen. However, individual Jews are barred from merely applying these regulations alone. An established tradition is necessary to allow birds to be consumed, even if it can be substantiated that they meet all four criteria. The only exception to this is Turkey. There was a time when certain authorities considered the signs enough. So Jews started eating this bird without a mass aura because it possesses all the signs. Fish must have fins and scales to be kosher. Shellfish and other non-fish water fauna are not kosher. Here is a list of kosher species of fish. Insects are not kosher except for certain species of kosher locust. Generally any animal that eats other animals, whether they kill their food or eat carrion, is not kosher, as well as any animal that was partially eaten by other animals. Separation of meat and milk Meat and milk cannot be mixed in the sense that meat and dairy products are not served at the same meal, served or cooked in the same utensils, or stored together. Observant Jews have separate sets of dishes, and sometimes different kitchens, for meat and milk, and wait anywhere between one and six hours after eating meat before consuming milk products. The milchig and fleischig utensils and dishes are the commonly referred to Yiddish delineations between dairy and meat utensils and dishes, respectively. Kosher slaughter mammals and fowl must be slaughtered by a trained individual using a special method of slaughter, shechita. Among other features, shechita slaughter severs the jugular vein, carotid artery, esophagus and trachea in a single continuous cutting movement with an unserrated, sharp knife. Failure of any of these criteria renders the meat of the animal unsuitable. The body must be checked after slaughter to confirm that the animal had no medical condition or defects that would have caused it to die of its own accord within a year, which would make the meat unsuitable. These conditions include 70 different categories of injuries, diseases, and abnormalities whose presence renders the animal non-kosher. It is forbidden to consume certain parts of the animal, such as certain fats and the sciatic nerves from the legs. As much blood as possible must be removed through the cashering process. This is usually done through soaking and salting the meat, but the liver, as it is rich in blood, is grilled over an open flame. Fish must be killed before being eaten, but no particular method has been specified in Jewish law. Kosher utensils Utensils used for non-kosher foods become non-kosher, and make even otherwise kosher food prepared with them non-kosher. Some such utensils, depending on the material they are made from, can be made suitable for preparing kosher food again by immersion in boiling water or by the application of a blowtorch. Food prepared in a manner that violates the Shabbat may not be eaten, although in certain instances it is permitted after the Shabbat is over. Passover laws Passover has special dietary rules, the most important of which is the prohibition on eating leavened bread or derivatives of this, which are known as chametz. 
This prohibition is derived from Exodus chapter 12 verse 15. Utensils used in preparing and serving chametz are also forbidden on Passover unless they have been ritually cleansed. Observant Jews often keep separate sets of meat and dairy utensils for Passover use only. In addition, some groups follow various eating restrictions on Passover that go beyond the rules of kashrut, such as not eating gebrox or garlic. Produce of the land of Israel Biblical rules also control the use of agriculture produce. For produce grown in the land of Israel a modified version of the biblical tithes must be applied, including teramat hamazer, maser rishon, maser sheni, and maser rani, the fruit of the first three years of a tree's growth or replanting a forbidden for eating or any other use as all a produce. Grown in the land of Israel on the seventh year obtains Kadosh at Shvit, and unless managed carefully is forbidden as a violation of the Shemitah. Some rules of Kashrut are subject to different rabbinical opinions. For example, many hold that the rule against eating Chadash before the 16th of the month Nisan does not apply outside the land of Israel. Vegetables Many vegetarian restaurants and producers of vegetarian foods acquire a hexer, certifying that a rabbinical organization has approved their products as being kosher. The hexer usually certifies that certain vegetables have been checked for insect infestation and steps have been taken to ensure that cooked food meets the requirements of Bishul Yisrael. Vegetables such as spinach and cauliflower must be checked for insect infestation. The proper procedure for inspecting and cleaning varies by species, growing conditions, and views of individual rabbis. Pariv foods and processes convert a meat or dairy product into a pariv one. For example, rennet is sometimes made from stomach linings, yet is acceptable for making kosher cheese. But such cheeses might not be acceptable to some vegetarians, who would eat only cheese and made from a vegetarian rennet. The same applies to kosher gelatin, an animal product derived from kosher animal sources. Other gelatin-like products from non-animal sources such as agar, agar and carrageenan are pariv by nature. Fish gelatin is derived from fish and is therefore pariv. Eggs are also considered pariv despite being an animal product. Kashrut has procedures by which equipment can be cleaned of its previous non-kosher use but that might be inadequate for those with allergies, vegetarians, or adherents to other religious statutes. For example, dairy manufacturing equipment can be cleaned well enough that the rabbis grant pariv status to products manufactured with it. Nevertheless, someone with a strong allergic sensitivity to dairy products might still react to the dairy residue, and that is why some products that are legitimately pariv carry milk warnings.